way I step, hmm, something in my jeans. F O I N O Y, you know that's the team, huh? Peace. This is your brother Aiden X, and welcome to the processing class. You said that the nation of Islam has taught you self care and all these positive things, but that's not what a lot of people see on the internet. You know what I'm saying? Has the nation of Islam taught you to hate white people or hate Christians or hate people just whatsoever? Absolutely not. Um, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has, he has spent a lot of time in the churches. And as a matter of fact, um, at the time, while the most honorable Elijah Muhammad was here, was present before he departed in 1975, preachers in, in the nation of Islam, they didn't have the best relationship previously. But it was through the representation of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad through the minister, um, day by day, years, year after year, they started, they started to have a companionship between the church and the mosque, between the churches and the nation of Islam. So it's not necessarily, no, it's like we do not hate Christians at all. And as a matter of fact, we love them. We admire them. And as a matter of fact, we wish to be able to give them a better, a greater, broader understanding of the Bible, because we unfortunately have had an enemy that has taught some of the preachers that live in the United States of America and preach on to the black and brown people in this country, but they don't necessarily have a good understanding of it. And as a matter of fact, it's been skewed, reversed, it's been twisted. And whenever you twist the truth, you twist the very mind of a people. But we don't have and hate for them, but we love them. We love them and we want to actually help them in their faith just so that we can be able to work together in order to get the lost sheep. And in regards to white people, no. And as a matter of fact, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said himself, we cannot, we can't just sit here and just blame and hate white people and just want to be like, oh, we just want to kill white people. No, because if we were to hate white people, we have to look in the mirror of our own selves because we brought them here. And he said this, he said these very words. He was like, can you blame the clay or do you blame the potter? Mm. But it's not necess it's not the color of a person that makes them a devil, but it's the mentality that they have been taught. It's the core of their thinking that causes them to do evil things and causes them to treat mistreat people because of their because of their class, because of their color, because of their sexual orientation. But it was that superiority mindset that has caused them to be a devil. And it's not that we hate that. But as we have to speak against the treachery, we have to speak against the oppression that has gone on for almost 500 years now. And that's not hate, but it's just calling out the wrong. Yes, sir. Has it made you hate gay people? Or, um, you know, a lot of people say, uh, you know, Muslims mistreat women. Has it taught you to hate women? No, absolutely not. Um, as a matter of fact, it has given given me a greater understanding of what the woman is, of who the woman is. Um, and the further I've grown into this teaching, it doesn't matter how the woman treats even herself, doesn't give us a right to mistreat her, so to talk down on her. Is that white women too, or just black women? Women in general. Women in general. It's like, it doesn't matter what the woman is or how the woman is, you don't disrespect a woman because you're disrespecting the core, the very origin of your own existence. It's like, you know, it's taught me that the women, they bring up our children. The women are play a huge role in the development of an entire nation. And as a matter of fact, a lot of people, especially, you know, sometimes Islam is taught in a certain way that women don't necessarily have a place in particular things that regard the building of a nation or regard the development of a nation. However, when I grew up in the nation of Islam, I realized that in fact, women have a huge role. And as a matter of fact, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad did a majority of his work on the woman. 
because he said, when you teach a man, you teach an individual. When you teach a woman, you teach a nation. Because an entire nation of people comes from her womb and the development of that womb. And however she treats herself will become the very sanction of the environment in which the infant in its development before it's born is will come forth. Yes, sir. Um, um, in regards to um to our gay and transgender people yeah. or those who may not identify who may not want to identify as either male or female, no, we can't. We can't. We shouldn't, and we never should hate our brothers and sisters. And as a matter of fact, we can't even condemn them in the first place. Um, and I believe, if correct me if I'm wrong, it was Jesus who said, "Breaking one law is the equivalent of breaking all of them." So it's some of us who unfortunately spend a lot of time condemning our gay brothers and sisters. However, they don't have the best relationships with the opposite sex. They don't have the best relationship or they are charged with the mistreatment of the opposite sex. Um, but it's like, we cannot condemn them either. And as a matter of fact, whenever I see them and know exactly when I'm looking at too, I don't overreact or be like, no, nah, get out of my face. I embrace them and I love them because I do.